Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Tia. I'm the director of Compassion Project and I'm here today with Perrin Lundgren from the Help Center. Um, Perrin, thank you so much for your time um, talking about mental health over the holidays with us today. Um, in our work, we work with teachers, um, healthcare workers, students, um, let's see, we work with a lot of different folks and mental health is um, always comes up. And so I think that is great to see this, the conversation normalizing, but then I think also we have a long way to go in, in terms of providing support, decreasing the stigma. And so I'm so excited to talk with you today and um, because this is a interesting time we find ourselves in. Um, yeah, would you please introduce yourself? Um, I know you've been with the Help Center for almost 12 years. So, so yeah. grateful for your uh, experience um, that you're sharing with us today. Yeah, so I'm Perrin. Uh, I use they, them pronouns and I'm a licensed counselor here in Montana. And as Tia said, I've been with the Help Center for 12 years. I started as a volunteer answering our crisis hotlines, which is a local number, the 211 information and referral number, and then the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Uh, in my time there, I also now work a couple of other jobs, I'm very busy at the Help Center. I'm the program manager of the Sexual Assault Counseling Center, and we provide free counseling and advocacy to survivors of sexual violence. And then I'm also the community educator, which is part of the reason why I get to be here today to talk about this topic of mental health, um, specifically around the holiday season. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to name that I've called the Help Center multiple times to support myself and others in times of crisis. Um, and I'm just continually impressed and grateful to have a 24 hour place that people can call and get support. And it's been hugely impactful for my life and people that I know. And just wanna name that, yeah, if you need anything, Help Center is a great place to call. Um, yeah. And so as we think about this um, time of year, I know we're coming, um, Hanukkah was a few days past, we're moving into Christmas. Lots of people um, I know also celebrate like the solstice. Um, so we're, you know, moving into a very like dark season in Montana, um, short days. Um, and this is a time when a lot of people have time off. Um, students are coming home or students have breaks. Um, and then we, of course, the new year as well. And so um, thinking about um, this is a time of change, of time of connection, and sometimes that brings a lot of a lot of stress. Yeah. Um, so for you, um, Perrin, um, why overall do you think that this is um, an important topic to talk about mental health in this time of year? I think, well, just like starting in general, right? It's really important to talk about mental health because the majority of humans will experience mental health symptoms to the point of being diagnosed at one point in their life, right? And what that means is, additionally, individuals will experience mental health symptoms multiple times, but maybe not to the level of being diagnosable. So human beings experience mental health symptoms all the time. And so we have to normalize this conversation. And remembering that the holiday season you know, at least in the US is kind of pushed as this time of reflection and connection. And so remembering that there are people in our family, uh, our friends and family who maybe might not have as many connections or might struggle with this time of year because of what the holiday represents or maybe what they're experiencing um, environmentally and with their mental and emotional health. Um, and so remembering that kind of around this time of year. And this season, right, winter season, uh, the holiday season brings a lot of like stress and a lot of changes along with it. So it's important to destigmatize this conversation around holidays because the other reason I think is sometimes we try and push away those things during certain times of the year of like, oh no, it's the holiday. So I'm not gonna think about anything rough. I'm only gonna focus on the positive, which isn't always a bad technique, but then you, miss, you potentially miss a whole part of yourself or a whole part of others during that time of year. So remembering those things. I think that's so humanizing and important to hear that this is just a human um, challenge that at one point or another, it's really likely 
um, that we'll need some sort of support um, yeah. around this um, topic of mental health. And um, as we were talking earlier, I really liked, um, I wanna bring this back of, um, it can be really great time to explicitly check in and send that yes. text of, hey, uh, how are you doing over the holiday season? This is what I'm feeling. And yeah. just really be explicit in like a text message or phone call or, you know, just asking people that you're bumping into throughout your life of yeah. how, how are, how is this time particularly for you? Yeah. Um, and so I want to move, segue us into like, what are some of the things that you see um, and hear most commonly during this time? Yeah, I think there are like a couple of things that we hear kind of like woven in during conversations during this time of year. Um, and specifically, specifically, you know, having to do with holidays are things like loneliness and isolation, people feeling like they don't have connections with other human beings, or um, they don't, right? They're an individual who is isolated either physically from family or potentially they are the only one left in their family. Um, and so we hear a lot of loneliness and isol isolation. Um, in that the next level kind of like the things that we hear are things like stress and pressure right the idea that the holidays need to be perfect um, that i have to look my house has to look a certain way i have to cook and prepare so many things and along with that comes financial stress right the stress of being able to provide an environment like that um, or we hear with like families, uh, caregivers and parents, uh, worrying that they won't be able to provide a specific type of holiday uh, for their kids. So like not being able to buy them everything that they wanted for Christmas or some of the things that they want are very expensive. And so the fear that their children won't enjoy the holiday or they're letting their family down in some way because of the financial stress of that situation. With that, it leads kind of into the next one. And one that I think sometimes we hear is like a, a joke, but maybe not always reflect on what that means. Um, but addiction around the holiday season, because I think we sometimes hear people talk about like, you know, drinking or having to use substances to get through family gatherings, right? And using that in a joking manner. And humor is one of the major ways that we cope as human beings. Like, so we kind of like signal that we're struggling, but we do it in a funny way. So it cuts the edge. Um, so I totally get why we're joking about that. And we need to recognize like, that's a lot of pressure. If you're thinking about or joking about having to drink a certain amount just to get through the holidays, that might be something to reflect on. Like maybe we need to consider like different boundaries or, or a different holiday experience so that that pressure doesn't exist for you. Um, and you don't turn to maybe an unhealthy way of coping with it. And then kind of the final one, right, is one that we mentioned. Winter is tough. We don't get a lot of sunlight, you know, here in Montana, specifically in like the Gallatin Valley, we're at a higher elevation. Um, there are a lot of things that can influence the way that we think and feel. And we're moving into kind of like this quiet hibernation state. And that can sometimes bring on things like depression and anxiety. Um, and, you know, remembering that, especially potentially some of us are working seasonal jobs too, right? Where our job is only going to last for so long and that can bring on some uncertainty kind of in our world too, like how things are going to go. And that adds to the way that we think and feel about ourselves. Yeah, I think a lot of, I think all of those make a lot of sense. And I think one more that's kind of coming up for me too, and um, I'm grateful to people who have given me this perspective perspective is thinking about the holidays can be a time when a lot of grief comes up because um, you may have lost people um, who typically you get to see around this time that aren't here anymore. And so yeah. always ask, I always try to, you know, name that for people or invite that conversation of, are you thinking about this person? Do you want to talk about them? How can yeah. we express like our love for them? Um, and yeah, and just like understand that that grief may be heightened at this, yeah. at this time of year too. Right. Accepting that grief exists while all also like honoring and loving that person that we lost, right? Like we get to feel sad during the holidays. Um, 
and that's okay. It's okay to have some grief or sadness around the holidays. And we can also feel the other side of it, right? That love and gratitude for that person. Mm -hmm. And so remembering that it doesn't have to be all just one. It can be multiple feelings. Yes. <laughs> and it's usually very complex. Yes. And if we don't know even what we're feeling, like sometimes that can be okay too, to just be like, I don't know, but I'm stressed out. Yeah. Um, and to hold each other in that. Um, and I love too, with that isolation piece, and again, moving into the third part of our conversation, which is compassionate action steps we can take towards ourselves and one another, um, is thinking about people who maybe won't get that invite to Christmas dinner, or you haven't called in a really long time, or um, just to try to make as many people in your life um, feel included while also honoring whatever boundaries you do have in place to yeah. take care of yourself too. So can you share, I know you have a great list of things that we can think about to be compassionate yeah. for ourselves and others. So I think remembering boundaries is like a great kind of like first step, right? Like what are my boundaries on the holidays or around this time of year? Just because it is a holiday doesn't mean your boundaries have to go out the door, right? Um, so thinking about things like that and also remembering like thinking about boundaries when it comes to like, do I want a big gathering or do I, do I not, right? So thinking about what would feel best. Maybe you just want a couple of people coming over using those skills. So thinking about what are the skills that you have on day to day and making sure that they're being used during the holiday season, right? So if during the morning you have coffee time where you reflect, using that. If you like to go for a brisk walk, I know like with the weather that can get difficult, but trying to keep those skills in place and not letting them go because of the stress or pressure of the season. Um, asking for help, right? Like if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're like, I've got a turkey, I've got a cake, I've got three pies, I have stuffing I've got to make, you know, feeling, I also have to decorate the house, I've got to clean, remembering to ask for help. Like it doesn't just have to be one person doing all that work. Um, sharing and trying to connect as a family around the holiday you want to create together, right? Because um, it isn't just one person's responsibility to do all of that. Um, setting realistic expectations again, kind of falls right into there, right? Like one person can't, can't do all the baking, all the cleaning and all the decorating. Um, that's a lot. Like I would never be able to manage to do all that. And so I know that if I want, if I want to have a celebration where those things are included, I have to establish those connections with the friends and family that I'm inviting, right? Of saying like, mm -hmm. okay, we want these kinds of pies, who can bring them? Who knows mm -hmm. how to cook a turkey? Who wants to help me decorate, right? Kind mm -hmm. of like establishing those things. Um, remembering that now's the time of year to kind of like help with connection too. Volunteering is a great idea. I know here in the Gallatin Valley in Bozeman and Belgrade, there are tons of opportunities around the holiday experience or yeah, experience, it works, uh, to give back. Um, and to support our community. And you can do that by volunteering or donating. Um, and kind of like lastly, remembering that you're human, right? Human beings mm -hmm. are human beings and we can't manage everything all by ourselves. And we need support sometimes, right? All human beings need support sometimes. And so the, maybe the holiday is a time where we do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've started to think less about like creating a, an event and more about like creating um, just like opportunities for connection. Mm -hmm. And that may have like a culminating dinner or may have something that is um, more typically what you might think of as a holiday celebration. But yeah. Um, really, yeah, thinking about I can be really creative. There isn't one set way um, that anyone needs to celebrate um, this time. And I think you bring up such a great point of thinking about people who um, are, are really might struggle even more during this time because of resources being um, closed, services being less available. So volunteering and donating um, are, are really great for that too. And, and thinking about 
including everyone um, in this time. So we're going to include some more resources uh, for everybody to uh, look through, dig through, use as you find helpful. Um, Perrin, thank you so much for this conversation. Thank um, you. I hope it reaches a lot of people. And um, so grateful to talk about, yeah, compassion and understanding and destigmatizing mental health um, with you. And I know we could talk for hours. <laughs> um, but do you have any closing thoughts or just, anything else you want to share? I just want to say thank you so much for inviting the Health Center and me in particular to this conversation. Um, and I'm just so grateful that we are encouraging individuals to think and think about these kind of times and think about each other. And so I'm really grateful to be a part of this. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, everyone. Take care.